Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Mother and Refuge of the End Times. Tonight, heaven tells us to look for signs. Every February, End Times antenna perk up. Will it be this year? Maybe, maybe not. But whatever happens, here's what you need to know just in case. And to help us discuss it, best-selling author and Marian expert extraordinaire, my friend Xavier Hall is joining us today. So stay with us. Xavier? Oui, I'm here. Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes? Perfectly. I'm this okay. way. Your I hope you can hear me, you and the viewers out there. Yes. Well, thank you for joining us today. Ah, it's a pleasure. Thank you again for uh, inviting me, you and Ron, for all my thanks. <laughs> so before we start, two things. First, as I started saying recently, you know, getting good, solid faith based content on the Internet is very difficult and um, it's, does, it's, it doesn't easily get through the algorithms. So I would like to ask you to please like, share and subscribe. It literally it literally tells YouTube to place our content in front of new audiences that need to hear this. So we really appreciate your support. And second, Xavier, would you like to start us off with a Hail Mary in Latin, perhaps, and then to ask the Lord to cover us with his precious blood? Absolutely, I would love to do that. That's all. In nomine Patri, et Filio, Spiritus Sancto, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus Tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunt et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. And uh, with your permission, I'd like as well to invoke uh, the most precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ on this show, in the course of this show, so that no distortion can come through, no attack or influence of the enemy can affect the message brought forth to the faithful, and that um, this show, this interview, this presentation is proceeds on forth as per the will of God. We ask this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, Xavier, your book, Revelations, here, here it is, continues to be on the bestseller list. In fact, it's number one in Vatican history. On behalf of our viewers, I really want to thank you for writing this book. I am um, I know how hard it's been, how long it has been to, to write and and the risks that you take in coming out publicly, especially given what is coming for us soon. The persecution is real and it's coming. So I thank you. And on behalf of our viewers, I thank you so much for looking out for our souls and for helping us to prepare for these coming times. It um, It's important work and we're grateful. The design who sent you and uh, Ron and uh, all the people who are answering accordingly because uh, in effect um, this does me a lot of good as well. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for your time. Um, there's also something I'd like to mention to our viewers. I've had several people ask in the comments who, where we can obtain this beautiful painting of Our Lady that I have behind me. I'm taking this opportunity to tell you because I can't answer that in the comments. YouTube won't let me. So um, it, it, it comes from a brilliant artist um, who was inspired by the statue in the neighboring village of Medjugorje called Tihalina. So this is Our Lady of Tihalina, who has um, come to represent the Gospa in Medjugorje. It was painted by Richard L. George, a brilliant artist whose artwork is a family apostolate. So you can find him at www.rlgeorge, without an S, dot studio. I'll say that again. It's www.rlgeorge, without an S, dot studio. So there you go. 
So tonight we're talking about how to prepare for the warning. Whenever it happens, um, some think it could happen this year, some think it might not. For my part, I think a lot has to happen before it happens, but um, we never know. The Lord has accelerated things and it could all happen all at once. So we don't know, but we should be always ready for when it does. And so our Lord says to look for the signs. I know people are tired of looking for the signs. A lot of people are getting fatigue, but it is what the Lord has asked to look for the signs. In Luke 12, verse 56, he says, you hypocrites, you know how to analyze the appearance of the earth and the sky, but why do you not analyze this present time? In Matthew 24, 37, he says, for the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. And we know what happened there. We all also remember the parable of the ten virgins. Quote, then shall the kingdom of heaven be like to ten virgins who taking their lamps went out to meet the bridegroom and the bride. And five of them were foolish and five wise. But the five foolish, having taken their lamps, did not take oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with the lamps. And so if you want to know more about the warning and um, the illumination of conscience and end times, please see our recent interviews in the live section of our YouTube channel. And so now tonight, Xavier is going to tell you about the physical preparations that our, that, that our Lord and Our Lady have given us, mainly through Marie-Julie Jaini. And, uh, and I will discuss the spiritual preparation for these end times. These are recommendations that heaven has given us for a long time. It doesn't mean that everything will happen this year. We shouldn't be panicking, but we should always be ready for when it happens. And besides, we could die today, so we should always be ready. So this is preparation, and hopefully this will alleviate some of the fear that a lot of you have, because the Lord does not come in fear. He comes in joy. He comes in hope and in peace. And this is the message that um, I will finish with, because that's what uh, was given to two visionaries that we haven't really discussed, but who are approved uh, by their, they have spiritual directors, and um, and so we'll discuss that then. So Xavier, I'm going to give you the floor, so if you want to tell us a bit about the physical preparations for the warning. Yes, for the warning, and also for the events that are coming, that is to say, the just comes. Um Marie's Legionie, and I'm going to try to go as quick as uh, I possibly can, because I think it's uh, extraordinarily important that you, uh, Monique, cover as well the spiritual preparation. So I'm going to go as quickly as I can, yeah. so that you can proceed for I think it's quite, quite important. So as we know, uh, as we've discussed before in this show, and in other shows in the past, uh, Marie's Legionie, among others, um, has been given some... Um, um, prerequisites, some instructions, some um, instruments uh, to protect, to help the faithful protect themselves, uh, spiritually and physically. But not just Marie Lejeune. Marie Lejeune has been unquestionably the cornerstone of uh, my book, Revelations. It's the largest chapter of all, a little bit even larger than that of Fatima. And um, in this country, uh, that I know of, the principal two books that have been written about Marie Dijeni are that of the Marquis de la Contre, who was the biographer of Marie Dijeni. He made a very brief English translation. And um, having worked and lived with uh, Marie Dijeni for so many years, uh, until her passing away in 1941, he was the foremost authority in the matter, in the mm -hmm. dossier of Marie Dijeni. Uh, I wrote my book based on years of friendship with uh, the Marquis de la Contre's granddaughter, Isabel. No? And um, you being um, a French speaker, uh, Monique, you know how the intricacies of the French language and the difficulty there is sometimes to translate it yes. from French to English. You cannot translate it um, textually no, or literally. There is some nuance, nuances, and... Um, some um, a spirit of uh, the sentence that uh, if you were to translate it literally, it would betray the context of the message. So it's uh, my book, Bad uh, Marriage Legendary, uh, is the most perfect I've seen in this country. 
natuurlijk te veel boosvol, maar het belangrijkste, meer dan alles in het geval, is dat de mensen die hadden, men voor de faithful, be brought forth to those who are ready, willing and able uh, to receive it, to live it for them. Mm -hmm. So in this instance, uh, and we will talk as well um, in conjunction with this particular preparation, those that were given also to other mystics and other visionaries, I'm referring to some more contemporary ones, such as uh, Luz de Maria, no? who I believe now, although she's Central American, lives in Argentina, and to Reverend Father Michel Rodrigue, who incredibly enough received, or rather Luz de Maria received the same message of protection in one particular instance um, as that of Father Michel Rodrigue. Mm -hmm. So that being uh, taken into consideration, uh, we'll begin first of all, as quickly as I can, to discuss first of all on those of Marie Julie Genie. Yeah. Um, in one instance, it is clear to understand that what I'm about to reveal is not particularly heartwarming, but alarming. But it, it must not be interpreted as a threat. It must not be interpreted as an ultimatum, but more than anything else, as a message of hope. Hope in the sense that these messages, these uh, shields that uh, we are about to share with you tonight, are meant exactly for that, to protect you protect your families if you have the faith and if you totally and unconditionally abandon yourself with complete trust at the feet of the cross. Mm -hmm. um, one of the first chastisements that uh, uh, our Lord and the Blessed Virgin Mary uh, revealed to Marie Julie would be that uh, in the course of these events, these prophecies which we discussed before, I'm referring myself to the geopolitical tension, conflicts that have been foretold um, as a form of a chastisement, but this one um, involved and brought forth by humanity itself. There will be a chastisement if humanity does not convert in time and does not return to uh, Our Lady's Son, Our Lord Jesus Christ. There will be a chastisement that will be in various, in very many different forms for different uh, aspects. One of them will be through profound and uh, disastrous uh, disease. Another one will be through natural disaster, with nature will rebel itself against humanity. You know? And uh, so there will be war, there will be famine, there will be disease, there will be destruction. Um, so and there will also be man-made disease and man-made weather fluctuations Indeed. Uh, one of those, well, yes, uh, there will be also darkness. Mm -hmm. Darkness that, that, that has been foretold, not just by Marie Julie Janie alone, or by uh, Luz de Maria, or by Father Michel Rodrigo, but by many others, among which, among whom rather, uh, nothing less than by Saint Padre Pio, who on two letters he wrote, and sent to the Vatican, he clearly announced the upcoming of a three days of darkness period, a seal of sorts that will mark the end of this particular chastisement uh, bestowed upon God, uh, upon humanity, due to its betrayal, due to its ignoring God, due to its arrogance and thinking that they can replace God and live with us. Mm -hmm. Nothing less than a saint a stigmatist, much more, and Marie Gligeny, of course, who is uh, known today in the Catholic Church as the most remarkable and complete stigmatist in the history of the Roman Catholic and Apostolic Church. For, no, indeed, unlike all the other saints, including St. Francis of Assisi, she bears the marks of all the stigmata born, uh, born by the, our Lord, by our Lord Jesus Christ. The crown, the hands, the feet, the sight, the back, the front, the stomach, the, the feet, the legs, absolutely everything. Hmm. And for over uh, 60 years, she lived the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ every every single Friday of every week. So let's begin to go quickly so that we can pass on uh, on the spatial aspect. 
uh, the protection brought, or rather brought forth and offered by heaven to the faithful. Mm -hmm. First of all, remarkably enough, very few people, and this is in the book Revelation I wrote, very few people know that there will be some precursors to the three days of darkness. There will be, and this will be only meant for the French uh, faithful, uh, a first four hours of darkness over Britain. No. Um, Xavier, yes. the three days of darkness, that comes after three and a half years after the warning, right? Uh, this will happen. The, the three days of darkness will be the last event that will seal all the chastisement by heaven. After the three days of darkness, it will be the renaissance, the rebirth of the world. Mm -hmm. So the warning will take place first, yes. The warning, as we all know, will be the revelation uh, to every single human being on earth, whether you're Christian, Catholic, agnostic, um, whatever you are. Every single human being on this earth will experience this phenomena at the same time. And this phenomena will consist principally about a new Pentecost of sorts. In other words, every human being will be able to see the state of his soul the way God sees it himself. Mm -hmm. this, this particular experience will last according to some mystics, uh, such as uh, Conchita Gonzalez from Garabandal, or like um, Michel Rodrigue. They both stated that this event will take approximately 15 minutes. But in this instance, everyone with sheer and complete honesty, will be able to see the state of their own life the way uh, God sees it, with complete honesty. If there will be no particular interest or self-brainwashing in this instance. You will be able to see everything you did wrong, everything you should have done right, which you failed to do, everything that, you've, that you have done that has been displeasing to our Lord. It will be a last chance for people finally to convert. Uh, after this uh, experience. Uh, this will be traumatizing for a great deal of people and for some, they, for very, very, very few, people will not survive it. They will have heart attacks, but it will be an extreme minority of people. The immense man majority of the people who will go through this experience will, of course, go on for. Oh, now, is that so? I, that's a good thing. I, I thought many would actually die. So yes, but very, very, very few. Oh, okay. That's what Gonzalez said. Okay. So, uh, after, within a year thereafter, then there will be the miracle on Pine Hill uh, in Garavandal in Spain, in the little village. Uh, others say as well that there will be um, the indestructible signs as well, like in Apparition Hill in Medjugorje. And even some mystics have said in all the true apparition sites around the world, Guadalupe, Lourdes, Fatima, San Nicola, Betania, Akita, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Then, after that, uh, if, and again, always the same if, if humanity doesn't return to Christ in time, then uh, within a period of time thereafter, there will be the chastisement that will begin for the means that I just covered a few moments ago. So, mm -hmm. So we know in advance that there will be the three days of darkness will be the last seal that will cover um, and that will finish this series of events that have been foretold. No? Uh, so we know there will be four hours of darkness over Brittany before this happens. Um, it will be also forewarned, and there will be also two days of darkness before the dreaded catastrophic three days, which we all all have been told. These two days of darkness will be a warning for the faithful, uh, which will be sent for another. Um, period of time where you will be able to leave your candles, but in this instance, the candles will be consumed. No, it will be only two days. But Xavier, are these extra days of darkness only for Brittany, or are they going to be worldwide? The two days of darkness will be worldwide. The four hours will be only for Brittany, for France. So, okay. all this is explained in detail in, in the book, no? But, um, mm -hmm. On one particular message uh, of, our, of the Holy Spirit, given to Marie Julie Janine on September 20th, 1880, our Lord, and I will give you only a few excerpts to go fast. You know? uh, the Holy Spirit told Marie Julie Janine, uh, and she mentioned the Holy Spirit as a flame. There will be two days of horrible darkness distinct from those advertised. In this instance, it is referred to the three days of darkness. You know? To resist all these signs, holy water is a strength and consolation and the candle 
but the candle made of beeswax. Uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary asked for 100% pure beeswax, no, for the candles to be used. All those candles that are not made of this paste will not help, quote unquote. Uh, she further, um, the Holy Spirit further added, added, in Brittany, the region of France, during these two days of darkness, under the lowering sky, it will seem like, like light. But no one will be able to see because they cannot put out their face by day when opening the door. There will be an envoy of God in the form of a hot flash, which will obscure the human eye. In other words, very much like in the three days of darkness, no one must leave their houses, no one must open the door, no, no one must open the window. If you do, you will not die, but you will be blinded. Let's mm -hmm. go straight to the three days of darkness. No? In this instance, yes, I'm sorry. I We have a question here, a comment, I should say. The three days of darkness is not the Garabandal chastisement. Oh, no. The three days of darkness have not, men have not been mentioned in the trilogy uh, prophetic prophecy for the children. Although, in some instances, in private um, discussions, it's been discussed. But you're mm -hmm. quite right. We're talking, of, when I mentioned the three days of darkness, as I mentioned a few moments ago, it was mentioned by Marie-Julie Jani, also by the visionary of Tali, uh, Father Michel Rodrigue, I believe Luz de Maria did the same, and most of all, by a saint, nothing less than by Padre Pio, yeah. for two letters he wrote and sent to the Vatican. No? And... Anna Maria Taiji, I think, right? Oh, I think. Yeah, no, she did. I wrote that as well in my book on chapter nine, and not just her. There were there were other sister Ayello, I think Elena Ayello. Ayello as well. Mm -hmm. Exactly. There were many more. Yeah. So those two are not the the exclusive uh, mystics who mentioned it. Anyway, mm -hmm. in the, the matter of the three days of darkness, um, our Lord. Um, Jesus Christ on November 13th, 1924, said that your blessed lies, 100% pure beeswax candles, will serve in the day, and my blessing will be abundant. My peace will be with you in this dark night. I will launch all the features of my justice. I will blast the, lo the losers of souls. I will sift the false consciences. I will annihilate the wicked. No? Uh, my cross and my divine heart will be your shelter, your refuge. This was given in 1924 by our Lord Jesus Christ through Marie's religion. Uh, furthermore, um, the Britain stigmatist, Marie's religion, mentioned to the Marquis de la Concri on a private message that she was told by our Lord that the three days of darkness will be on a Thursday, on a Friday, and on a Saturday. Now, there's a of the most holy sacrament of the cross and of our lady three days bless one night hmm. so i just wanted to show you uh, this is where you can buy this is what the 100 percent beeswax candle looks like well, you can get more in different different shapes and forms the important thing to know is this this particular 100 percent beeswax candle must be blessed by a priest and during the three days of darkness this will not be consumed. This is how it will start when you will light it. And this is how it will finish three days later, or rather three days less one night later after you uh, t uh, blow it off. It will not be consumed at all. It will be intact. Mm. Now, okay, when you say it needs to be blessed by a priest, wasn't there a requirement that it be blessed on candle mass? It is recommended that it be blessed on the on the 2nd of February. If okay. it is not, the fact that it is just blessed by a priest is just as good. But it is okay. recommended that it be blessed by a, on the on February the 2nd. Indeed. No? Okay. Again, I'm trying to make a race against the clock because I know we are taken by time. So, what's more, um, our Lord, uh, rather the Blessed Virgin Mary, through a message which was recorded by the Marquis, but the Marquis omitted in this instance to write a date stated uh, it will be easy to notice everything will shake except the pieces of furniture on which uh, the burn on which will burn the bees wax candle you will all group around the table the the altar with the crucifix and my blessed image this is what shall take fear away from you as these deaths will cause many deaths here is a proof of my goodness those who serve me well 
invoke me and keep me in their homes through my blessed image, I will keep safely all that belongs to them. During these three days, I will protect their cattle from starvation. I will keep them because there must not be a single door ajar. No. So, anyway, we are going to pass now on the three days of darkness. But this is a very important moment which we must prepare for this particular um, instrument. And under no circumstance, I cannot stress this enough. Are we to open the door? Are we to look outside through the window? Are we to open the door if somebody knocks with a familiar voice? The Virgin Mary said that, that during the three days of darkness, hell will be empty. And the purpose of these demons will be to make human beings disobey, directly or indirectly, the instructions given from heaven through the Blessed Virgin Mary. They will use familiar voices, maybe a nephew, a brother, a cousin, God knows what. They will try every single trick for you to disobey and open the door and lose yourselves and all those inside. Right. So we need to pray now that all our loved ones will be home when this happens. Um, we have a question. Will you be able to light the candle with a match or will the candles light on their own? <coughs> Excuse me. And related to that, a lot of people are saying we need to have the matches blessed as well. But I, I haven't heard that in the messages. What do you say of that? No. Uh, nothing has been mentioned in La Poder about blessing the matches or uh, anything of the sort. So uh, whether they will light on their own, that's a very good question. I've been wondering that myself. There is nothing that relates uh, whether um, they will do so miraculously on their own, since the whole concept of the of the, this beeswax will be a miracle in its own. Nothing will work, nothing will light, nothing. And not even you won't be able to normally strike a match and nothing, no other candle will lead properly. So possibly, God being wiser than anything, than anyone, will permit probably us um, uh, um, lighting a match and lighting these candles. Or who knows, perhaps they will light on their own, knowing who their owners are. I do not have the answer to that. Nothing has been meant or mentioned in the messages of that. Event. And what is the purpose of lighting this candle? Is it mainly for light or is it also for protection? For light. It okay. will allow you to maintain, that, that will be the only source of light that you will be able to have during the three days of darkness. For as I mentioned, no battery will work, even if they are brand new. No electricity will run. No ordinary yes. candle, unblessed candle, will be able to, to be lit. Nothing except this. And this, right? And uh, yes, of course. Right? The, the scapular, oh, yeah. Marie's lesion, the purple scapula. There we go. Right, so. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, Tell us about it while we're at it, because this is related to light as well. Unquestionably. The purple scapula, uh, as you showed it, I'm wearing mine on my chest always. Um, the purple scapula, the Blessed Virgin may state it, that uh, all those who would wear it, particularly the heads of um, the families, uh, will not only protect themselves, but uh, their own families, even if the members of the families do not wear it. Uh, the Blessed That's Virgin okay. Mary, I have the message here, uh, told Marie Lijani, and I quote, and this was given on August the 23rd, 1878, no? and she was said, told by the Virgin Mary, let me wear my Mr. Magoo's, my legendary Mrs. Magoo's glasses, <laughs> <laughs> Here is what the Holy Virgin made me see on her immaculate heart. It is a large scapula, larger than an ordinary scapula. Uh, it is a little larger than the palm of her hand. It is a beautiful purple, almost the color of violet. Here is, what, uh, here is what is on it. In the middle, there are three nails that crucified our Savior on the cross. Some are crossed on the others, not exactly in the form of a cross, and at the point of each nail, there is a drop of red blood. Above the three nails, there is a type of large sponge that has raised e uh, ears like those of belled oats. The three drops of blood will go to join together and fall into a small chalice painted in red. And the chalice is surrounded with a crown of thorns. And there are three little crosses engraved on the front of the chalice. 
This is the side of the scapula that is in the middle of the Holy Virgin. I notice that this scapula hangs by two violet straps that pass over each shoulder. And there are three knots on the left shoulder and two on the right. The other side of the scapula represents the Holy Virgin Mary sitting, holding her adorable son in her arms. The mouth and the head of our Lord rests on the heart of the Holy Virgin. At the lower end of the scapula, at the feet of our Lord, is an angel dressed in white with curly hair. He has a white crown on his head. His belt is red. He has in his hand a white linen with which he wipes the feet of our Lord. On the side of the angel to the right of the scapula, there is engraved, there is engraved a ladder. Behind our Lord, to the left, the reed of the passion painted in red, but without a sponge. The tears of the Holy Virgin falls on her breast to the right, and they stop at the feet of the angel. The scapula is ed edged with a red line, and the straps are woolen. No. Uh, then the Virgin told Marie Julie Let me now, my dear child, explain to you the meaning of this scapula. I tell you, my victim and my servant, my servants of the cross, that for a long time my son and I have had the desire to make known this scapula of benediction, this scapula, my children, is supposed to be made of my heart, because my heart is the emblem of simplicity and humility, hence the color violet. The nails that have pierced the feet and the hands of my son have been little venerated and are venerable, hence my son, in his divine wisdom, has made that these three nails be painted on the front of the scapula. These three drops of blood and the chalice represent the generous heart gathering the blood of my divine son. The red sponge will represent my divine son drinking, in a manner of speaking, the sins of his children, but his adorable mouth refuses. I desire that the end of the scapula be of violet. But I desire that the nails, the chalice, the sponge, and the crown be on a piece of dark red flannel. The first apparition of the scapula will be a new protection for the times of the chastisement, of the calamities, and of the famines. All those who are clothed with it shall pass under the storms, the tempests, and the darkness. They will have light as if it, is, as if it were plain day. Here mm -hmm. is the power of this unknown scapula. Now, now, the Holy Virgin Mary presented the scapula to our Lord, who said in his turn, open quotes, I address you, my victim, and also my victims and my servant, my children of the cross. I see and I come to give you an idea and profound thought. During my descent from the cross, they handled me to my mother. This descent, this thought, this devotion is little known. I would like it, I would like by this reproduction on this scapula that it passes into the hearts of the children of the cross and that they salute me by these three salutations. Number one, I salute you, Jesus, crucified to grant me life. Number two, I salute you with all the joy of the angels and the saints on your descent from the cross. Number three, I salute you with the sadness of your mother when you reposed on her immaculate heart and on her immaculate love. So all the great promises given with the scapula, and again, I'm trying to go as fast as I can. Uh, open quotes. My children, all souls, all people who, pos who possess this scapula will see their family protected. Their home will also be protected. First of all, from fires, which will never enter there. This scapula will strike down the ungrateful which, who blaspheme my name in the home where it will be displayed. If an impious person enters that home, he will be so completely struck that his conversion will be closed. All those who will wear it will be preserved from thunder, from sudden death, and from accidents. During chastisements, they will be protected. Whoever will deposit it in the holy temple, in the church, will cast away from it impious persons and profanations. By reminding an obstinate soul about the scapula at the hour of his demise, he will awaken the faith in it 
and a firm belief that all those who will have it and think upon it and love it will be spared the troubles of souls. Those who will wear it will be sheltered from any danger as though they already possessed heaven. This scapula, finally, will be as a lightning rod under which the blows of just and divine wrath will not dwell. Uh, our Lord added, I'm almost finished, on August the 23rd, 1878, every priest will be able to bless this scapula. By wearing this scapula, they would say five or seven times the crooks ave prayer and meditate one to three minutes on my holy passion. I shall grant great graces to those who desire to be close in this holy habit. No? So that's the promises given to the purple scapula, which you were so kind to show, uh, Monique. Let's go to the next thing as quickly as we can. We did discuss the... Tell me. I have a quick question here, uh, but is it possible that we encounter the three days of darkness outside of our homes and what to do in that situation, in that occasion? You mean if you're caught? If you're uh, caught outside of your home. That's, uh, that would be absolutely awful. What I would <laughs> recommend is that if that were to happen, um, and if you're depending on the distance from your house, first of all, there will be warnings before these three days of darkness take place. When I mention the warnings, I mention all the true messengers of God will give warnings throughout the world. I'm referring principally to that of Garabandal, uh, children of uh, Medjugorje. I know that it, there is a lot of controversy and I do not want to get into it tonight. Uh, remember, and, I'm, and I assume that the immense majority of our viewers are Catholics, including those who do not believe in either Medjugorje or Father Michel or Remember that we Catholics must, above all, uh, have charity, including for those things or those visionaries we do not believe in. We must pray for them if we don't believe in them. And you don't have to believe in them. But regarding Medjugorje, uh, I can give testimony since I've been there, that truly, when you see a village filled with endless lines of people begging for priests to give them confession, and thousands of people at night spending the whole night on their knees before the Blessed Sacrament, it cannot possibly come from the enemy. It cannot. And if it does, mm -hmm. that is suicidal. And this is a personal testimony from a pilgrim who, who, who's gone there. As for Father Michel, let's not forget that he's a priest. He's a man of the cloth. And just for that matter alone, we owe the man a minimum of respect. We owe him respect because he's a priest. And I, for one, again, as I said, we've a clear his uh, situation, the controversy that took place a year ago, principally mm -hmm. through your show, uh, Monique, uh, and through John Henry Weston and uh, Christine Bacon. I beg your pardon. Xavier, when we're, we're talking about sacramentals and someone is asking, Viv, Viv is asking, I did hear that it won't light if you are in a state of mortal sin. That goes for any sacramental, correct? I mean, all these promises you need to be in a state of grace to benefit from these graces, correct? I, I, in this instance, I will not give you an answer because you would call upon me to make a judgment on the person that might or might not be subject to mortal sin. The truth okay. is I do not know. Okay. Obviously, I would say, I would recommend everyone who is uh, subject to mortal sin or who is suspected to have committed grave wrong uh, as soon as possible mm -hmm. uh, to confess and to regret one sin with all one of one's heart. It is human to fall. It is divine to get back on your feet. In the words of Marie, of, not Marie of, uh, of a compatriot of mine, Saint Therese of the Little Flower. No, she was from Normandy, from Lisieux. Mm -hmm. I was born only a few miles away from, from her uh, birthplace. Marie, uh, uh, Saint Therese of the Little Flower used to say that every fall it's a new opportunity to get up on your feet again. So I would say if you've fallen, get up on your feet as soon as you can, confess and get washed. Okay? Uh, as for the answer to your question, I do not know. And I do not pretend, I do not want to pretend that I do. And it's a question of, that belongs, that is between God and the person who 
might be or not in a state of mortal sin. It, it doesn't, I cannot answer that question. Shall we go on to the next? Yes, please. All right. Another uh, particular, now the sacramentals, since we're talking about sacramentals. There is one thing that uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary through Marie's religion is asking again and again, and that's the use of exercised water. Now, it's very simple. You mm -hmm. have to go to see a priest uh, to have it exercised. There is a particular ritual uh, to follow through, you know, and it is recommended always to uh, use it on your persons, on the doors of your homes, on your windows. And um, Father Michel Rodrigue has a particular prayer that has been taught to him by God the, the, the Father, uh, how to make your home a temporary um, bunker, uh, protection, uh, refuge of souls, you know, using exercise water. You can use any kind of water, and if you have exercise salt, just put it on the regular water, the water will automatically become exercised with just a pinch of exercise salt. The same goes with, uh, if you have a huge container or bag of uh, sea salt, you can put a pinch of uh, exercise salt in it, and the entire bag will be considered exercise salt as well. That's um, incredible. Wow. It is that. <laughs> so those are two particular sacramentals that the Blessed Virgin May and our Lord recommends for Marie Julie So that is something you have to get for a priest, and that is not so complicated to obtain. I can hear already some of your viewers saying, but where can we get that? Just speak to a priest, ask him, how can you obtain one? He will either do the ritual himself, or he will guide you or direct you towards a priest who can do it uh, properly. Now, there is a, there are quite a few other things that um, the Virgin Mary ask the faithful through Marie Julie Janie uh, to use another instrument, uh, which this one is very special. Uh, have to there it is. Uh, this is a particular picture of the Sacred Heart. Marie Julie Janie stated, "Now let us wear this picture on ourselves. Let us put it on our houses. Let us stick the Sacred Heart safeguard uh, on the doors and on the windows of our home." After that, can we not hope that the inscription stop or cease? The heart of Jesus is here. No, or the heart of Jesus is with me. Together with our own profound prayers, this will preserve us from our enemies inside and out. This is, comes from Marie Julie Now, I can give testimony of this as well. I've made quite a few copies of this and I laminated them. Um, the ones I made were considerably smaller than this particular picture. No? And this one is in French, of course. Uh, being from there, uh, <laughs> it was normally normal. But they have this particular photo, uh, picture with the words inscribed here in English. No? And uh, this particular prayer, stop, the heart of Jesus is here. Uh, may uh, uh, may the, your uh, rain come, uh, has been granted every, by His Holiness Pius IX on June the 14th, 1812, 100 days of indulgences every time you do this prayer so you can find this in english on the internet and when we so now we have a lot of hurricanes we had a couple of years ago a major hurricane that in miami so i immediately uh, laminated about 20 of these put them on all the doors of my house on all windows and although our neighbors homes were severely and their gardens were severely damaged ours was intact not even in style of the nothing. So I'm giving personal testimony on this particular subject. In addition to the brass couple, and again, forgive me, I know I'm being a blooming pest looking at the time because I want you to take over. Um, <laughs> there is another, this is what you have to say is of the utmost interest and importance. There is another thing that the Blessed Virgin Mary from Marie Chalice and the mystics is asking us to wear. Uh, mm -hmm. And that is the brown scapula, the scapula of Mount Carmel. Now, I've been to the uh, monastery of Mother Angelica in Alabama, and I bought this particular brown scapula, which is absolutely, I, I've never seen one that equals its beauty. You can so, see 
Xavier, okay. where did you where did you find? Uh, because uh, we have some uh, viewers who are asking, where did we get all these things? It's not easy to find. So, <laughs> well, uh, all right, I, I will come to that immediately after this. This is the Prince Kepler of Mont, Saint of Mont Carmel. No, this was given to uh, Simon Saint Simon Stock. Yes, unfortunately, an Englishman. Saint Simon Stock in twelve fifteen. <laughs> Uh, by the Blessed Virgin Mary, no, and uh, the promises of this sacramental is a treasure. It is promised uh, by the Virgin Mary, who Saint Simon stuck, that all those who will wear this particular sacrament at the moment of death will, no matter what sort of sins, mortal or otherwise, you might have committed, will never suffer the fires of hell, ever. You might go to purgatory for a particular long period of time. And there is such a thing as the fires of purgatory, but never for eternity. Consider purgatory a place of cleansing, where all your sins will be washed, however long it will take, but all the souls that go to, to purgatory are holy souls. But one day or the other, they will leave to go straight to heaven. They are holy souls. Lastly, uh, the person, the American lady, who is, by the way, watching, this is Kathleen Loney, and I know you're watching, Kathleen, all <laughs> affection to you, uh, made this particular flag with a special photo and painting of the Sacred Heart requested by Marie-Julie Jeanne on your home. You, know? you can uh, put it um, put here, metallic bar, uh, in any way you can, but she was kind enough to send that to me as a gift. So I'm immensely grateful to um, Mrs. Loney. Mrs. Loney, in response to your question, you just gave, uh, recommended, uh, Monique, is a lady who lives in Ohio. She is a splendid example of the best of what an American lady is all about. That lady uh, offers her time, full time, uh, to prepare a kit with all these uh, particular scapul uh, scapulars and uh, sacramentals. Uh, even more so, uh, the herbs uh, to protect against the burning plague and other ailments which have been foretold. You know? uh, she sells these at cost. This lady, and uh, I regret to say, has lost her husband recently and she had a hip replacement. She is forced because the overwhelming amount of orders to hire somebody to help her uh, respond to the huge amount of emails and orders she gets from the four corners of the world, Madagascar, Vietnam, Tasmania, New Zealand, Canada, you name it. If we mention the places where she doesn't sell those places, the list would be shorter. You know? She sells throughout the world. So she has been, and a couple of times, very late with delivery. You know? Sometimes we receive ourselves emails uh, from people who don't understand why they've sent uh, uh, the funds and the things have not come. Uh, whenever we do, we send it to, to her. And the poor lady, how many times have I spoken with Mrs. Loney in tears because she realized she was not able to accomplish with all her tasks. She is full of kindness, full of good faith, and she repaired. She immediately sent all the orders afterwards to all those people. That lady is incapable of malice. She is what we call in France a wingless angel, and she does her best. So if you order from her, and I put her email address on my book at the end, I think if, I don't remember the page, but it's one of the very last pages. Uh, I beg, I beg you uh, to be indulgent um, about uh, the delay that this might take place or not. There shouldn't be any more delays. Now, oh, there you go. Lovely. Thank you, Monique. Mm -hmm. I don't so you see there her email address? Kathleen Loney with two L's at gmail.com. Um, so I beg you to be uh, uh, very understanding if sometimes there is a delay. But now she's hired somebody. She's thinking of hiring possibly a second person just to meet with all the uh, all the orders. All and, the orders. But, but was, the, yes. There's also the fact that she orders from overseas, and when you order overseas, it can be number one. It takes a while. <laughs> When things are on back order, there are a lot of things on back order, and a lot of the uh, Hawthorne and whatnot comes from Ukraine and and those countries. So it's it's there's a back order there, and also um, 
because the shipping is so expensive, I found out that she was actually doing this in the red. She pays for it herself. She doesn't have what she asks us to pay in shipping does not cover it all. So it She's really awesome. is an apostolate of love. It, uh, I feel so bad, you know, when, when, when people are upset and, and rightfully so, if, you know, sometimes it's a lot of months, but um, at the same time, I just know what goes behind it. And it, she's just such a good person. She's not a businesswoman. She's just a really wonderful older lady who's doing this out of the goodness of her heart to save souls. So I don't know if that can help you in any way. If you, you know, just persevere, email her and or email me and I'll try to, you know, contact her and ask her i don't know but please don't be upset with her she's a wonderful wonderful soul so yeah absolutely i know that with john henry weston uh, has received uh, i think one one lady sent an email saying i don't understand why this is not technical john henry very understanding um send that to me send me the copy of the email i sent it to kathleen she was in tears i yeah. spoke with other people what am I supposed to do when I see this charming lady who works so hard on, with no reward just to yeah. accomplish, to help my usually She immediately responded, immediately sent the kit. And um, John Henry was aware of that. And uh, John Henry, like, all, um, like as well, uh, um, other people have, have been, I had the honor to be interviewed, like with you, uh, Monique, have seen um, a kind demeanor and uh, her eagerness to do the right thing as quickly yeah. as possible. Just be understanding and prepare. And she puts these kids together by herself. She puts she she makes notes on there for people and she's oh, she's wonderful. Yeah. But so all these things that you've mentioned, except the brown scapular, I think she you can we can get it through her. And also well, I know the uh, purple scapular can also be obtained. I've seen it on Amazon. I've seen it at uh, Queen of Peace Media online. Uh, and they there's, I think they even have a kit where you can sew it yourself. Um, I think it's a bit expensive. Well, in any case, yeah. I know um, it's up to, to everyone to look for those. Uh, we mentioned the Hawthorne. And a lot of people have said, what is this Hawthorne thing? Well, yes. A lot of people know what it is because they have heard us talk about it in the past, you and I, and mm -hmm. in other shows. The Hawthorne uh, leaf, that is uh, one of the cornerstones of uh, uh, heaven's gift to protect ourselves physically. From the burning of, plague. Yes, the burning plague. And do I still have time to, to talk about it, uh, Monique? Yes, be quick. <laughs> be quick. Uh, <laughs> the whole, uh, there will be a... Virgin Mary informed marriage religion, the part of the chastisement, if the humanity does not convert in time, will be a, a very murdering, uh, ghastly um, pandemic a disease called the burning plague. This, the effects of this burning plague will attend first the mind, the speech, it will attack the body through patches, red patches that will very quickly be so burning it will be unbearable and will form black surroundings with a yellow spot in the center. This will lead to inevitable death. It will be airborne for a virus uh, mutation. It will be airborne and terribly, terribly contagious. It will claim the lives of millions of victims around the globe. Uh, in one instance, it was said that uh, men's medical science will not have an answer. We can't mm -hmm. have this this uh, ghastly disease. Man's uh, medical uh, science, perhaps not, but uh, for God, nothing is impossible. And in one or two different messages, the Blessed Virgin Mary informed Marie's reasoning that indeed there will be one remedy against this aura, and it will be the hawthorn leaf. Now, the way to do it also is. And it's any hawthorn, right? Any hawthorn. Red, white, it matters not. It's irrelevant. And it's the leaves that we want, but if there are flowers in there, it's fine, right? Of course. You think for one moment, and that's <laughs> not meant to you, but to, uh, I've been asked the same question and I answered. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was an Englishman who was asking me again, an Englishman. Uh, Why well, you, Xavier? Is it, would, it be, would it be acceptable if there are flowers in it? So, for Pete's sake, do you really think for one moment, I told him, my friend Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey, do you think for one moment that God 
is a bureaucrat that will say, mm, uh, let me take my pencil. Wait, no, no, no. There are flowers here. This doesn't work. No, the whole thing is a question of faith. No, it's a question of matter. So all you have to do, according to the, and there is a specific uh, formula to prepare this fusion, this tea of Hawthorne uh, leaves. The version was specific. And it took me, I have to admit to you, when can I stop with this? I, I'll, I'll leave the floor. But it took me a very long time to accept it. I thought it was an American invention, an American, too American, too Hollywood TV plot. Finally, it took me a long time, and I'm not going to go into it to, to explain what made me finally realize this is authentic. No. But the fact of the matter is, the version asks that when the time comes, when you start suspecting that you have it, or you see the first symptom, no. quickly, as early as you can, Start making a, uh, a fusion of these hawthorn tea or hawthorn leaves. Boil some a pot uh, until with what water. No, once it's boiled, once the, there are bubbles, turn off the fire, and immediately put certain amount it matters not of leaves on the water. Just make a tea. No, and then put a, a cover on top of the of the water uh, while uh, the leaves. Uh, get cooked, I suppose, by the boiling water. By the, no, the no, they don't cook. They seep. They, whatever. <laughs> yeah, because thinking, you I'm can't not... cook them. If you cook them, all the nutritional content goes away. <laughs> Are you related to Jeffrey? Uh, okay. <laughs> You're right. You understand. You, you let so, it seep, yes. Exactly. You let it sleep in it for 14 minutes. Not 13, not 15. 14 minutes. So get your mechanical timers before before it happens. 14 minutes. Once the 14 minutes are over, the version may add it. Take off the pot, cover, uh, make it go through a filter like a regular tea, and then drink it and apply it on your person three times a day. While reciting the prayers that appear on my book. No? Or mm -hmm. with all your heart. Ask assistant, ask help. The version said that those, this particular fusion, this particular tea, will be the only remedy that will be able to serve the people. However, if you take it too late, then it will not save the life of a person. It will simply diminish the suffering. It will go through until his or her passing away. Mm -hmm. I think we've covered the immense message. There are other herbs that we are yes. out of time. So well I, I'll mention something quickly uh, because Father Michel, I asked Father Michel, you know, there's a, Marie-Julie was given the remedy of dipping a miraculous metal in water. Now, is it water or holy water? I can't remember. I think it's water. regular water, but wow. the metal has to be blessed and to, to drink this water when we're sick, but it's only, we only need a drop of this water, correct? Yes. All you and need to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, not at all. All you, the actual message that doesn't mention miraculous metal. The actual message says it could be a metal that carries both sacred heart and the immaculate heart. It could be even a piece of cotton mm -hmm. with a heart drawn. Put it in water, and the water itself will become automatically blessed. And that water will be meant to put on uh, food. And if it is contaminated, some reason or another, it will totally preserve the consumer from any ill or disease or anything of the sort. Yes, because I thought it was for healing. It is that as well, but it is also to protect the drinks and the food of those who will consume them. Okay. Um, and Father Michel, I when I I asked him at that meeting, would it could it replace the hawthorn? And, and he said yes. Uh, I do trust blindly, Father Michel. So if he says yes, I accept it uh, as such. There is mm -hmm. also another um, particular um, protection that was given, uh, which is the, the version mentioned that there is a prayer, O Cruc Save, mm -hmm. which is, I mentioned it on the, on the book. If you write it on a piece of paper and you are desperate for miraculous healings of unknown disease, you can swallow this piece of paper and it will save you. Uh, this lady, I mentioned this charming lady, uh, Kathleen, Kathleen Loney. Uh, 
she had a brilliant idea. I would say a French idea. <laughs> she did take uh, rice paper, you know, yeah. rice paper, uh, which easily dissolves in the mouth. She gives those away or sells them away, but everything she makes absolutely not, no no profit of it all. So she takes them, and she sells these and puts them in the kit, and people can write uh, with non toxic ink. She sent me before she didn't do it anymore on a non toxic ink. Tiny, tiny letters, almost microscopic on the on the paper. So, um, uh, and I sent you some, but I think that uh, uh, Ladouat, the, the, the the customs officials customs. took it for themselves. They took it right out of the package for some reason. And I'm I so upset. Quite, I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I still have some from my family, but you can ask uh, Kathleen and have everything you have blessed by the priest. It is of the utmost importance. Have holy water exercised water which the devils and the enemies of god cannot stand this and exercise salt i have in large large quantity and i think i've spoken enough i like the rest of your viewers i'm very interested in listening to what you have to say about the spiritual context i think i i, I beg your pardon i spoke too long no oh, i've been asking a lot of questions <laughs> but there's one more uh the violet leaf the what the, vi the violet leaf and creeping charlie Ah, the creeping Charlie. I'll uh, okay. I'll go very quickly on uh, those particular two. Uh, this is the whole song. I know uh, that Mrs. Loney was saying that with the violet leaf, you only need one leaf that you can just or yeah. you just let a drop of water run across it and just drink that little drop of water, and it'll be sufficient. Quite so, quite so. Um, regarding uh, well. For remedy against chest and headache ailments, uh, Marie Julie stated on June the 21st, 1923, you will take the infusion, again, a tea of St. John Wort, uh, called Glecoma Hederacea. Or well, I think it, that is. Not uh, St. John Wort, remember? Exactly. It's a herb of St. John, which is different. It's different. Confusing, but different. It is. Yes, it's not the herb of St. So that's actually something that we need to correct in the book. Well, it says, Marie Lisny stated the uh, legal medical uh, name in Latin is Glecoma ederacea, hmm. especially during the crisis suffering chest and violent headaches. No? Uh, regarding uh, the violet, uh, that's for unknown fevers, the humble violet. Marie Lisny stated, fevers occurring for unknown reason can be soothed with violet infusion. The perfume of virtue uh, of the perfume and the virtue of humility. No? Uh, John Ward, uh, now I think that's what we're talking about. Uh, the yellow St. John's Ward is recommended by Marie Julie for times of crisis, for the times when the depression will be rampant. Also recommended for suffering of violent headaches. The yellow mm. St. John's Ward is also mentioned in the text as a remedy for violent mental troubles and chest pain. No? Um, some of the prayers to recite to the Blessed Virgin Mary before the using any of these plants and the remedies, including the Hawthorne, is this. Uh, Mary Julie Jenny addressing the Blessed Virgin Mary stated, Good Holy Mother, we have time, Monique? Yeah. Yes. Very, very quickly. Good Holy Mother. Uh, as for the plans that Divine Providence has sown on the earth, we ask you to give them a very special benediction, particularly on the Hawthorne and on the St. John word, Glecoma Ederacea. The Blessed Virgin Mary added, O oh, my beloved little children, when you use those little flowers and those little plants, pray to me, open quote. O oh, Holy Queen of Heaven, health of the sick, prodigy of power, extend your benedictions on this infusion all-powerful mother, show us that you are a mother by relieving our misery. No? And then she added, my little children, when you take the little flower, invoke me, O Immaculate Mary, O our mother, O our mother, look down on us and let your, your blessing be revealed in our suffering. You have a lot more a description of other things and other messages concerning uh, protection for the health, medication of sorts, and additional sacramentals for the protection period of chastisement, including the Miraculous Medal and the Medal of St. Benedict and the Cross of Pardon and the 
medal of the a lady of good god all this is in the book i know we yes so much to cover. so much to cover it's 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 all in the book it's all in the book um we also can we, there, we can also mention thieves oil which is um saint michael angel uh, saint michael oil oil of saint michael it's essentially thieves oil uh that uh i think Luz de maria mentioned as well um there is the uh miracul the, the miraculous grapes if you uh, we are to have three months worth of food, but not everyone has the space and the money. So you can make miraculous grapes. If you look it up online, you'll find a recipe there. Um, I think, oh, and Luz de Maria also has a book of remedies that she was given, a booklet, uh, a PDF that you can get on her website, Revelaciones Marianas dot com uh where our lady gave her remedies for all these ailments as well i won't go through them all there are just too many just go to her website revelaciones with a c marianas dot com um okay so i will now discuss the spiritual preparation and i have this little booklet called do whatever love requires I'm only going to go through a few points, but they're so it's it's a lot. So if you can find this book, I'm not sure where you can. I this is a very old book of mine, but it's worthwhile. It was it's their messages from our Lord and Our Lady to Harriet Hammonds, the late Harriet Hammonds and the late Carol Amici, two visionaries who were not who had spiritual directors. Um, they were good friends with Bishop Danilak. And they were not, the church has not made a, a judgment uh, for or against. But once you, you see the messages, I think you'll recognize the voice of our Lord and Our Lady. It's absolutely beautiful. I could discuss it, but I'd rather just let them speak and let our Lord speak. I think it's worth a lot more. So, okay, please bear with me. It's a little long, but I think you'll, you'll, you'll get a lot out of it because... There's a lot of fear out there. I know that our channel has been receiving a lot of letters, people who are afraid. This hopefully will help you not be afraid. So I think it's important. So um, I'll start with uh, what Carol and Harriet have said, uh, because they they give a bit of a synopsis of what they were told by our Lord and 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 how they and they are living this out. So they said. Nothing is more important now than living in total union with Jesus and Mary. Their words to us must form the fabric of all our decisions. What forms the fabric of the future will be a weaving of our service to our brothers and sisters and our fidelity to God. By staying closer than ever to our Heavenly Mother and her angels, we are better able to listen to the soothing tones of her voice as revealed in all of her messages to us at Guadalupe, Lourdes, Fatima, Medjugorje, and so many places in our present world. Filled with love and concern, guidance, and teachings for all of us, her dearest children. I should mention this book, does it have the date? This was 1998. That was written in 1998, so it's a bit old, but the messages are still obviously wonderful. We will need soothing and encouragement. We are then able to pass them to pass these on to others. When we come away at every opportunity for prayer of quiet shutting out the world, we are better able to absorb the love of Jesus, relying on him to carry us through every obstacle the evil one seeks to place in our path. This is no longer an option or something to do when we have the time. There is no longer time to be spent pondering, doubting, discerning our path, questioning the validity of these requests. Our preparation is over. The time of action is upon us. The salvation of our souls and the souls of the many is at stake. When priorities are purified, we find all the time we need to spend on these last opportunities to be ready for whatever the Father will send to purify the world and his people with it, revealing his might and bringing as many as possible back to his loving, forgiving arms. The greatest destruction will be a result of man's greed for power and his acceptance of all the destructive forces of evil. We must read scripture every day, living our faith in maturity, sincerity, and humility, reflecting the life and words of Jesus, filled with truth and honesty and love. 
We have great need of rereading the messages of Jesus and Mary given in the last 15 years and warning us of the need to change, reconcile, pray, and return to the radical gospel call. Without the light of Christ in our hearts, we too will be swallowed up by the darkness increasing in the hearts of, of so many. Excuse me. Too many are lulled by the false sense of security generated by what appears to be such economic pr prosperity, especially in the U.S. Instead, we are called to be in Jesus' sacramental presence while it is still available to us, building up a well of strength from which to draw against fatigue, dread, and even terror as the enemy challenges everything that is sacred. To reflect upon the strengthening words and graces offered is the only recourse we will have as the evil one ascends to, the, to great heights now. So this message to go before the Blessed Sacrament is paramount. And it's been asked um, to Luce Maria, to Gisela Cardia, to many visionaries. We need to go back to the chapels to before the Blessed Sacrament. Consecrating all our actions at every moment, the slightest little thing, as St. Therese was taught as well, will enable the utmost protection and help to be given, protection against giving in to all the demands of the enemy. The temptations, as was told to Luz de Maria recently, the temptations will be fierce. And that's where a lot of people will lose their souls. No lukewarm responses will suffice from this point forward. Either yes or no will determine our ability to hold out in the face of the greatest difficulties. Events that will result in an eternity of uninterrupted bliss and happiness or forever in the company of hate-filled souls suffering the torments of the damned. Jesus has said, These are to be the final teachings and lessons for now. My mother and I have been teaching for a long time. I'm going to skip a little bit. But um, he says, To hold truth in your hearts and to speak truth when necessary, is, is what is important. Um, about hope, he said, there is nothing more we can say or teach at this time. Many are still not paying heed to what has been said. Children, there is hope. Continue to pray, live my words, be with me, trust and love. Through these teachings and lessons, they want us to know of their deep love for us and how much they want to help us. We are the ones now who have to respond to them, to their love, with love, and to start living the gospel message. We are to support one another, our Holy Father, our priests who support the Vicar of Christ on earth, with our prayers and our living Christ-like in our daily lives. It's important that we pray for the priests and the Pope, whether we agree with them or not, it's it doesn't matter. They depend on our prayer on our prayers to not give in to the wolves. And Jesus has said this countless times. And if you want to know more about this, read the dialogues of Saint Catherine, Catherine of Siena. Our Lord is very specific about what why it is necessary. Jesus and Mary are giving all of us a wake up call. Are we ready? We need Jesus and Mary. We need their help. We need each other. We need to start listening and seeing with our hearts as events will continue to escalate with forces that will try to convince us God's way is not the best way. Time has run out. We can no longer sit on the fence and be spectators. It is now time to stand up and be counted on their team. How to obtain graces. So they said, our God who loves us beyond words to explain, calls us to be a part of his chosen remnant who stands firm in the face of suffering and deprivation, a meager existence. We were created to live a life of Christ in all its dimensions because we are meant to receive the eternal rewards earned for us by his passion and death and resurrection. All the graces we require are here for the asking. Ours for the taking will be given in overabundance as we repeatedly turn to Jesus and Mary in complete trust. This complete surrender is a must. And all these tribute, well, the trials that we've had so far have been to prepare us for this complete surrender because without that, we will not make it through. Great joy will be felt by living this way as we are further convinced to persevere in our journey towards grace and 
and power and gifts of the Father in heaven meant to save us for eternity. Let us respond with all our minds, all our hearts, all our souls, and all our strength. Now, the messages of Jesus. So here we go. Trust and faith. Some of the lessons. He says, be at peace every moment now. Trust in your Jesus and his divine mercy. I am that mercy, dear ones. I am that love and power that created the universe and everyone in it. I am the one who has promised to save you. Please, please trust in our care for all of you. Continue to work and live the way you have been in a schedule that includes balance and peace. Remember, children, I am your God who has saved you already. Just allow yourself to continue to trust in all we have told you that you know to be truth. Be comforted, my people. Now, of course, he means we still have to be in a state of grace. When you believe in trust, all that God wishes and wills, and as you learn to live this trust in complete surrender and love of him who loves beyond your imaginings, you begin to grow in a fullness of faith that will be unshakable. This is all Jesus speaking. Children, and you are my beloved children, my love knows no bounds, and there is nothing I will not do for you to help you on your journeys of faith, but it also must be worked on and nourished by you through my word, absorbing my word, through the working, <coughs> excuse me, through the working of the Holy Spirit, he will encourage, enlighten you in strength and guide your hearts in a way I have taught. You will be able to come to my heart through increasing your living, that word, that love, that trust in your daily lives, and showing all of us, not only to me as I wish, but to each of my children, your brothers and sisters. It is in this way, as your trust through complete surrender, complete giving to me, <coughs> excuse me, complete giving to me of your very selves, that your faith will grow and become as a shining light to all who need to see me through you. He mentions a lot in this book about setting an example for others and about preparing ourselves so that we are ready to help others. Um, he says to be, become as a, as a shining light to all who need to see me through you. Um, there is no longer time for deciding whether you can or want to do this. You must, my little ones, as I am the only way, the only light that you will be able to follow out of this sea of darkness, which is at this very moment completely enveloping the world in which you live. It is imperative you not waver in this faith you have in me, that your trust is complete, for it will be necessary to have complete confidence in me as the darkening sea of chaos and tribulation rises to momentous degrees all around you. All my chosen ones will need to be that beacon of light to those who will think they are dr drowning or are about to drown as the sea swells to heights you cannot possibly imagine. It is then you must always have absolute, unshakable confidence and faith in me, in my mother, and in what my Holy Spirit will inspire. You then should follow these inspirations blindly, even though at times it will not make much sense to you. Father Michel has said that, and a few other visionaries that I know have said that too. Sometimes what our Lord asks of them seems very strange, but you have to have trust and just obey, leave it in their hands to, to do with what, you know, to, to grow that little seed that you're asked to plant. The Father in his love is doing wonderful and miraculous things in people's hearts through me. Do not question his methods or his reasons. Just trust and love unconditionally. This is how you are to live from now on. Many of my chosen are being taught various virtues that will be needed for the future days of trial ahead. Continue to ask me to cleanse your hearts, to heal them, to create new hearts in you. In this way, Satan cannot penetrate your souls. Your hearts then belong to me. Please do not take them back as I have not finished fashioning them as I would like. Your hearts are to be a complete mirror image of my heart through my mother's immaculate heart. Give all to her always, for she knows what and how to care for your hearts and souls. From her heart, all roads lead to mine. And when you are in her heart, you are in mine. And about trust, Our Lady says, 
um, your time, um, I, as I have told you many times in the past, your time as you calculate it is not our time. There is never to be a second guessing as to as to this. Wait, in because she's referring to people asking when is the warning and all this. A wait in love, trust, patience, and perseverance. The need is more than ever for a complete trust as you wait in patient faith for these events to come about. Many are going to need all the faith you are praying for, a faith built on solid ground through wisdom, perseverance, trust, and patience. When things seem almost impossible, that is when you are to trust even more. She says, I want to love all my children back to health, spiritual health. Come, come, for I am always here. I want to mother all my children back to him, the most loving of fathers who waits for your return. Um, Jesus speaks about prayer and he says, I urge you to increase prayer even more to the limit that you think you cannot. You can as you unite all with me, with my virgin mother, with your angels and saints and the souls of in purgatory. All of you in my body, the body of Christ, need to be united in this way now even more. Evil will come like you have never before experienced. When I speak of temptations, this is, this is what he means. You will need the support and strength of each other through prayer, through uniting with us in all you think, say, and do from now on. There needs to be a unity of hearts and minds and wills with ours, and you have not been asked as you have not been asked to do before. Without this unity, this support for each other through us, you will not survive. You will not be effective tools in our hands. We need you, each of you, as you have been chosen. You have been chosen. As my mother has said, you are each a piece in this heavenly puzzle of the Father's plan. Keep in touch with each, uh, with each other now. Continue or begin, if you have not before, to network with each other for support and for love, to know how you can be of help to each other through our plan for each of you. You need to hold hands, so to speak, to make a strong chain that will be impenetrable, one whose links are solid and cannot be broken by the evil one. Then wait in patience, peace and love, always in hope and joy for what will be asked of each of you. Pray, um, you and all those who pray must not cease, even though there seems to be a great prosperity in your country at this time. This is a false peace. I think Marie-Julie Jani was told this. There would be a false peace before it all happens. Soon all this will be gone and there will only be the basic simple things that prayer alone can bring. And by calling on me for help, children, prayer, sacrifice, good works on the part of all of you who, I'm sorry, Prayer, sacrifice, good works on the part of all of you now, united with us in heaven, can lessen what is to come after this period of grace and mercy. So you see, there is hope, but hope if we pray and if we surrender completely. We can't be double-hearted. We can't be praying and not hoping or not trusting. We have to pray and trust. It goes together. St. James says this, actually. Um, remember all of our promises of protection and guidance. Remember that you are mine and have nothing to fear from the enemy. Be at peace. I am your Jesus who will love you eternally. Be filled with joy. I love you. I love you. Um, she men Our Lady mentions a little bit about praying. She says we need to pray as a family. It's very important that we be families of prayer for protection. Um, it is my wish that more who that more would pray unceasingly for conversions, for our priest sons, for peace, not only in the world, but in your hearts where peace starts and takes root. Without peace, without conversion, you will always have chaos and division. So, so peace starts with you, with each one of us. Exactly. So Come, so come now, all my children, away, away with me for prayer. Come at any hour when, when my Jesus or when I'm sorry, when my Jesus or I call. My love and peace I continue to bestow on all who wish to come under the mantle of prayer with me, to my Son, your Savior and King Jesus. Um, she says, uh, pray by coming before Jesus with your hearts in your hands, outstretched and giving all to Him, for Him to touch to heal, to kiss, 
to love as he enfolds you in the gentleness of his embrace. When this is done through me, through my heart and hands, I caress your hearts with gentleness and love, kissing each one with lips full of fragrant love to touch even the hardest of hearts, thereby opening it wide to my love. This enables me to offer your heart to your God, the Father, and to my Son, Jesus, your Savior, from whom all things come and from whom all things evolve. She speaks of reverence in the church and of coming early. God, our Lord is very saddened by those who come late to Mass or who don't come and prepare at Mass before the, before the Mass begins. And then she speaks, Our Lady speaks of the triumph of the two hearts. Um, she says, it is the desire of the triune Godhead that our beloved Pope, the Vicar of Christ, Jesus on earth, proclaims soon the, the dogma of my being mediatrix, advocate, and co-redemptrix. This dogma, which the Most Holy Trinity wants proclaimed, will usher in the triumph, the complete triumph of my Immaculate Heart. Jesus speaks of his true presence, his real presence in the tabernacle. And he says, dearest ones of my sacred and merciful heart, to look on me in the tabernacle and realize my presence before you, to know I am here is as much as most human beings can afford. As you look at me, I look at you with much love. If I were to reveal my presence to you, my light would, would more than make you immobile. You would not be able to see for the brilliance of my being and be blind, blinded as at such intense light and beauty. My presence is real in the tabernacle. It is as real as if I were to become a human figure to you now, as in the splendor of my ascension into heaven. Come, of, come often to spend time with me in my presence, as I then enfold you in my arms and within my heart. Come, continue to come to me daily and stay with me, Pray with me, with Mary, with your angels and saints in front of my blessed sacrament. This is where the graces will flow for all the needs for the, for the today's and tomorrow's to come. Um, I li like, like an exact message uh, of Marie Julie Jenny uh, that she received from our Lord. It's, it's remarkable how, uh, <laughs> how similar it is. It's beautiful, isn't it? It is. Oh my goodness, we're nearing the time to finish. But um, Our Lady says to hurry and pray before the Blessed Sacrament because we won't have it more, much longer. Um, she speaks of fear. I, uh, she says, no, is it our Lord? Our Lord says, I want you not to fear except for a holy fear of God. Fear is foolish for you are to trust God for everything when you enter in and with me, my heart, and allow me to wholly be in you. You then will realize a small taste of eternal life. This is not life as you know it to be. It is a life completely absorbed in me, etc., etc. I don't have time to continue much, but um, basically he, he wants, our Lord wants us to prepare our souls so that when these events come, we will be there for the others who will need us. They will be seeking help. They will be desperate. They will need information. We need to know our catechism, to brush up on our catechism so we understand, we know the truth from, you know, the true catechism from the, fa the, the false one. Um, Jesus says, focus, uh, to focus on him for strength. I will never be away from you. Keep the eyes of your hearts open now, even more so as there is much as there is much in the sea of deception, much in the sea of deception, apostasy, chaos, and false peace. These will try to rock the very foundation of your faith and trust. Call on my mother and myself often and hold on tight as together we will ride out the storm ahead. Um, she speaks of, conf Our Lady speaks of confession. Um, they, for future events, they speak of leaning not on our own self, but on our Lord and our lady. Um, they suggest that we pray the litany of humility, um, is recommended to be said daily should be lived completely. You then die to yourself and become nothing in the eyes of the world or yourselves. And this is so that, um, we can better serve people when, when the time comes, others when the time comes. Our Lord asks us to actually pray to have to receive the illumination of conscience before the warning, so that having been through it, 
will be able to help the others when they go through it. And he's disappointed that not more people are asking for this grace, but he will give it to you if you ask. Um, I encourage all my children to increase prayer, frequent confession, reparation to our hearts, daily mass and communion, communion, daily visits to me in the Blessed Sacrament, if you can, and your state in life permits this. My words in Holy Scripture are to be lived now and always. Encourage the no. Encourage knowing these words in the Holy Bible, in the Catholic Catechism, and those recent letters and encyclicals of my beloved Pope John Paul. Every one of his writings is monumental and most significant for my children. Especially important is to live these words as well as living in my will through my divine mercy. Teach it, show it, bring it to all my children. Um, they ask for prayer and and penance and fasting. Please, my children, renew your efforts in these in these areas. Know that I am helping you. And I think I'm going to end there because we really have to end. But um, maybe we'll continue another time. <laughs> but I wanted you to have these these words of wisdom. Again, the book is "Do Whatever Love Requires," and it's by. Uh, Carol Amici and Harriet Hammonds. They were both mystics who passed away. Um, very special messages for end times, mainly for men, for end times. So, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Xavier, thank you so, so much for being with us tonight. And in the words of John Paul II, be not afraid. Why not? As Mark Mallet would say, because Jesus is in the boat. And because, as Esther reminds us in the Bible, we were made for such a time as this. So please like, share, and subscribe. It really does help us to get these messages across to as many souls as possible. And links to our Telegram, Facebook, Signal, and Rumble pages will be in the description below. May God bless you and keep you. And may the Immaculate Heart of Mary be your refuge. God bless you, everyone. Good night. Music